I'm Jula Enrig. I'm a nephrologist. That means I've been taking care of patients living with kidney diseases for over 20 years. I'm also the chief medical officer at Trevere Therapeutics. And Trevere Therapeutics, it's a small biotech, and it's really focusing on developing and really delivering therapies for people living with rare diseases. So IgA nephropathy, it's a rare kidney disease. And IgA nephropathy, it's caused by antibodies that would normally help you fight an infection. And instead of doing that, they're getting caught up in the kidney filters, and that results in kidney damage. This kidney damage, it's manifest by the kidney filters leaking protein. And this protein, you can identify it if you get a urine test. And you shouldn't normally have protein in your urine. So any protein in your urine is not normal and is harmful. And what this proteinuria does is this results over time in the kidneys not working as well. You lose the function of the kidneys, which one of the main functions of the kidneys is to clear out toxins. And over time, they can't do that. And what happens if you can't clear out toxins is that you have kidney failure. When you have kidney failure, you can't live without your kidneys. You have to have something replace what the kidneys are normally doing. And that's typically dialysis, which is a part-time job hooked up to a machine, or transplantation, replacement of that organ with, with another organ. And what's important about IgA nephropathy and, and really the devastating part of this disease is that it impacts young people, people in their 20s or their 30s. And unless you can manage that leaking of protein in the urine and the injury that's occurring in the kidneys and the loss of kidney function, these people, people who get diagnosed in their 20s and 30s will have kidney failure really in 10 or 15 years from diagnosis. That's the prime of their life. That's certainly younger than me, people who are working, having children, and they wanna live to be able to watch their kids graduate and see their kids go to college and get married and see their grandchildren. And unfortunately, this is a life limiting disease if we can't treat it appropriately. So IgA nephropathy is caused by the production of antibodies that normally you'd use to fight infections. And your body recognizes those antibodies as not normal. And so they form these complexes that are, are atypical in large, and then they get clogged up in the kidneys. And it's that deposition in the kidneys that results in damage. We don't know exactly what triggers these antibodies to occur, whether sometimes it occurs after a, a viral infection. So it's somewhat an immune mediated disease. We think that there's probably a genetic component to it as well. And clearly there's an abnormal response to the kidneys when this deposits in their kidney, whether there's a gene problem there, there's a kidney specific problem there, and then this whole cascade that causes proteinuria and kidney failure after that deposits in the kidney. Well, the historical treatment options have been overall health management. Make sure you watch your diet, you exercise well and you control your blood pressure. And then we've also used medications to manage IgA nephropathy. And these have been medications which block abnormal hormones in the kidney called renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And I'll, I'll just use the word RAS inhibitors because we know that those can protect kidney function over time. And then for select patients, if they're severe enough, meaning they're leaking a lot of protein or they're losing a lot of kidney function, we may pull in steroids, which have not the greatest side effects. And then occasionally we'll use immune suppressing medications that you typically would reserve for a cancer patient, but we'll use these in the sicker patients because we haven't had a lot of therapies and really few that are targeting IgA nephropathy. The great thing that we know is this is changing. We now have new therapies, some in development, some that have recently been approved. Sparsentin is the molecule that we have been developing for treatment of IgA nephropathy, and it's now approved for patients in the U.S. and in EU for reducing that proteinuria in patients with IgA nephropathy. Sparsentin is a dual endothelin and angiotensin receptor blocker. And why that matters is we know mechanistically these two hormones work together 
in adverse ways in IgA nephropathy to damage multiple compartments of the kidney. Importantly, we know that if we can block these two hormones together with sparsentin, the way that it does blocking both, can preserve the kidney structure, preserve kidney function, and what that translates into is reducing proteinuria and preserving kidney function over time. And I mentioned that the previous standard of care in IgA nephropathy has been RAS inhibitors. So we wanted to know if sparsentin could replace the historic role of the RAS inhibitors in treating patients with IgA nephropathy. So we designed a phase three trial called the PROTECT trial to demonstrate if sparsentin was superior to a maximally dosed RAS inhibitor, Herbisartan. So we did a head-to-head, one-to-one trial of sparsentin versus a maximally titrated RAS inhibitor, Herbisartan, to see if we could lead to better control of proteinuria, preservation of kidney function in a trial of patients with IgA nephropathy. And importantly, our phase three trial called PROTECT Demonstrating some demonstrated both those a meaningful reduction in proteinuria as well as preservation of kidney function and that benefit accrued over time compared to treatment with herbisartan. Importantly, we got approval in the US and Europe based on a proteinuria reduction, where overall we saw 50% reduction in proteinuria. And that received what's called accelerated approval in the US by the FDA based on this nine month results. And we see received conditional marketing authorization in Europe. But the trial didn't stop after nine months. Those patients continued on for two years to look at preservation of kidney function. We call that estimated glomerular filtration rate or, or GFR, because if you can preserve kidney function, we're looking at two years, but you really want to do it over the life of a patient, then you know that over the long term, you can keep them off dialysis. And importantly, our results showed a positive treatment effect on preserving kidney function. So some of the numbers at one year, patients on sparsentin had about 1.7 milliliters greater kidney function. That got better at two years absolute better number of 3.7 milliliters greater preservation of kidney function at two years with sparsentin versus herbisartan. So first we showed a reduction in proteinuria. We confirmed that you can preserve kidney function over two years. And we're, we've submitted to the FDA for full approval based on the confirmation of benefit on kidney function. And additionally, we'll be submitting to EMA and of course the rest of the world as well. Since we have presented our phase three trial data, we've looked at a couple of other important things. One, do we preserve kidney function and reduce proteinuria across the spectrum of disease? Not just the severe patients that we got our initial approval for in the US, but the earlier stage patients, patients who have less proteinuria. And importantly, we see a benefit across the spectrum of those patients. The other data is combination with one of the medications I didn't talk about, which is increasingly being used to treat kidney disease. And so it's used a little bit more generically in IgA nephropathy, and that's SGLT2 inhibitors. And what we see is that the combination of the two, which we anticipate to be the standard of care in the future, is safe and reduces proteinuria. And we'll have more data over time with regards to that combination treatment. One other thing that I'll talk about that we have presented is we replace the standard of care. We would like to be used early on in patients when they first get diagnosed. So what we just presented at a scientific Congress is patients who haven't been treated yet. They just got their kidney biopsy. They haven't been treated with the standard of care yet. And you can start Filspari or Sparsentin early on before they've seen any other treatment. And what we showed, if you treat early, we can get these patients to reduce their proteinuria by nearly 80% over a year time frame. We can get nearly two thirds of the patients into complete remission. Complete remission is pretty amazing. And you can stabilize their kidney function. More to come on that data, but we're pretty excited about the opportunity, not just to treat patients who are later in their disease, but who are recently diagnosed.